Hey guys, uh, I'm on the middle of the day here, just hanging out, dicking around on Vassal and stuff, and I noticed we got a little TC game going on, so I thought I'd stream it and record it for you all. I don't think anyone's watching right now, but if you want to watch it later, this is a PB Poncho versus Veldrin. I've never played any of these guys before, I believe. It looks like Matt Holden. Matt Holland is our PB Poncho, and then Veldrin's Veldrin. And uh, so they're about to uh, place their dials to determine what squads they're going to run. Holland's calling number one is his decimator. Number three sounds like his or number two is his uh, headhunter's form. I don't know what Veldrin's are yet. Veldrin PV Ponch power penetrates the mind like that of the evil one. Oh, my cat's went out. Hold on. Alright, so looks like we got one swarm. So this is Veldrin. He's got Kath with some seismic charges. Don't see the old bombs too often. Predator, that's pretty popular, especially on bounty hunters for some reason. Everyone loves him on them bounty hunters. And he's got a recon. It's fairly popular on the bounty hunters too. As you can see, he's got another one. And he's just got a lone alpha. I don't see them too often. Sometimes you'll see them in like a squint swarm. But just on their own, you don't see the lone alpha too often. That's an alright squad. We got ponchos. He's not running that. This is Decimator with three blacks. That's a cool squad. And then he's got the one he is running. It's got Kraken, Cluster Swarm, Failsafe. I don't really know. Well, I guess he's ran this more than me. I'm not a fan of the Failsafe on with Cluster Missiles. I feel like you're pretty much going to hit there when you're getting two attacks of three. Then he's got the Ion Pulse with Dead Eye. That's pretty common with Blount. And then he's got three other Talas, all with missiles too. One with Cluster. Two with homing. I don't really like cluster missiles. I feel like, like against a decimator or a falcon or B wings, they're good. But going against other high defensives, like interceptors, even bounty hunters, real, I'm not crazy about them. I like them on kraken, obviously, because then you get to activate that twice. But otherwise, yeah. So this is gonna be a pretty good matchup here. The Predator is not going to get the double reroll that he would get because he's running all these Talas. It's going to be interesting to see how they set up. They're both at 100. The old seismic charge.
Huh. So they had two of those squads were almost the two they didn't play with were almost identical. Three black squads. The only difference is Poncho's all had a predator, I think. And then I think he just had a patrolman, whereas Veldrin had the decked out Ken Kirk. Hmm. There's someone watching, maybe. Anyone here? No? Alright. So yeah, Holland's saying he's not even sure about what debris does. So, I like I said, I've never seen any of these guys on here, but I have to think Veldrin's got a little more experience, at least with Vassal. But they've both got two decent-looking squads. I'm not, a, I'm not just a big fan of the heavy ordnance. I mean, even though. With Kraken, these homing missiles are going to be uh, focused, target-locked attacks because you don't have to spend your lock to use them. And it probably is going to result in some big hits. And cluster missiles as well. But Kraken can only boost two of these. And you can swarm one too, but I think, I think the consensus is when you're playing in a tournament setting, you're just kind of putting a lot of faith and those red dice when you run those ordnance and more times than not they're just not going to work out for you they will sometimes but I think if you play the odds and then the munitions fail save that's kind of a odd throwing I think but like I said play more than me Take a look at homing missiles for those of you that don't know. So, crack and blind, and pulse and dead eye. So dead eye is basically, you know, when it says, oh, you don't even need to spend your target lock. So, huh? So I wonder how that works then, because it says. When an attack instructs you to spend a target lock, you may spend a focus instead. But you don't need to spend a target lock for the ion pulse, so I'm not sure how that works. And the cluster missiles. And the other thing is, when you're running with ordnance, the big thing. Yeah, the mission, you don't discard it unless it hits, but with cluster missiles, you get three attacks, or two attacks of three. Really hard to miss with that. But the other thing, I kind of ran sort of a build like this for a while. Aaron with the cluster, Blount with the ion, and then a couple of fillers. And the thing is, is when you run ordnance, any secondary weapons, you're always looking for the first engagement to be at range 3 because that's when your biggest that's your biggest advantage because he's not going to get the defensive bonus out at range 3 and you will uh, but the thing is with cluster missiles you have to close to range 2 so now the big advantage that all these homing missiles give you you kind of lose that so that's why even though it's fun to play that cluster with Aaron, that's why I'm not a fan of these extra homings. The one I ran was I basically had Aaron with cluster, Blount with ion, two X-wings, and then I had a proto pilot as a little flanker. And it was a decent squad, but the two things I realized that is that you have to get to range two to get these off, so it's not a huge advantage with Blount's ion to stay back at range three. And also, Blount is so... he's He can get killed before he shoots sometimes. Probably won't this game, because it's just going to be Cath shooting before Blount. But with the meta, a lot of times a 6 is going to shoot after a, a couple, two or 
even three ships, and you can die, which is just brutal if you lose him early. But he's got that, and then one more Tala with another cluster. Yeah. So. Gonna, it's gonna have to get to range one. And. Looking at the matchup. Have to say. I like Kath. Kath's build. Because. Probably, he's probably not going to kill either of these guys in the first opening engagement, even with all that ordnance. He might, but with those recons, I don't think he will. Well, if he's able to get to range 2, initially he might. That's going to be a big thing for... Who the hell is running this one? Veldrin. Veldrin. Is it... Normally, when a guy's got ordnance, you want to close the range 2 or 3 to negate their value. But with those two cluster missiles, now I think he's going to be looking at, okay, I want to stay back at range 3 this time. I think, is, that would be my guess. Because if he loses one of these big, big fellas on the opening joust, the opening engagement, that would just be death for him. Even if one of them still gets to shoot, and the bounty hunter is going to shoot last. So you might see... Holland go for the bounty hunter because all his ships you got eight six four 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 are gonna shoot for that bounty hunter and with all that ordnance he's got a chance to kill it before it fires if he's able to get to his range two but that will be the that will be the objective for him so the interceptor and the bounty hunter and they pack it they pack the asteroids in. Both of them, no one going for them spread out. They both pack them in. So that leads me to believe that Veldrin's going to fly in a pretty loose formation. Because if he tries to fly those bounty hunters together, it's going to be hard to get him in there. And, and also, for Holland, same thing with him. He's really going to have trouble flying into that field. So I think you're probably going to see him go around it one way or the other.
You know, I was talking about those seismic charges. I really feel like that was probably just filler for Veldrin. Because, I mean, what else do you do? Anti-pursuant lasers? Meh. Yeah. I mean, the only other thing he could have done was upgrade the Alpha to an Avenger. So, it really was pretty much just filler, it looks like. Um, keep Kath alive, I would say. Kath late game is pretty tough, to, pretty hard to handle, especially with Predator and the Recon. Uh, so, Veldrin goes with Super Spread Formation, and Holland packs it in, and he is going on the outside. They leave the starting template up. I don't know if I'm allowed to say that or not. No, nope, there it goes. Okay. So, decision for Veldrin being, he's got this packed in squad. It's like four spaces across. No way in hell it can enter that asteroid field. Does he boost ahead with these guys, get the interceptor into the asteroid field, try to flank, and then kind of do the same thing with Cass and just run this bounty hunter away and make him either turn into the asteroids and shoot at the alpha or chase the bounty hunter while these guys are pounding away from the side? Or I think that's probably what you're going to see because it really makes no sense. He might kind of cut in here, sort of. But I think that's probably what you're going to see. I think I might go Bounty Hunter straight. Just blast Kath ahead, the fourth straight, the fastest she can go. And then maybe like a three straight with the Alpha. I don't know if Kath is a man or woman. It's a woman, I figured, with the last name Scarlet. So the Alpha is going to blast ahead. Do we see a boost or not? He just focuses, plays it safe. Bounty Hunter runs away. And looks like the headhunters are going to blast ahead too. So the onus is going to be on Holland here. What do you do? Next turn, you know this interceptor is doing some sort of turn. If not a two bank, like a three turn or something. Or maybe just two four and then you might boost, but I think you'll probably see him turn. Do you turn into him? Do you do a slight bank? Because these guys hit hard. They're glass cannons. But they hit hard. You don't want him on your tail while you're just chasing these bounty hunters around while they're shooting at you out of their ass. But at the same time, you don't want to turn into those damn asteroids because you're either going to have to break up your formation or run a big risk of flying over them. So Cass turns into him. Mm. I think what he's thinking here... If he just wants to flank hard with the Interceptor, let him try to get close and get some good hits in while they're du duking it out at range 3. And his big fatties can take some hits, even if it is Kath. Because those double focuses, 
It can absorb some extra damage for you. And Headhunters that kind of that weird dial. The X-Wing is these three are green, and then this is green. Headhunters kind of flip-flopped, where these are the greens, and that's the green. And a lot of times, what happens is you are going to shoot at each other from range two or three, and then cast going to stress you out with the crit. So you want to just go slow the next time to try to ensure you're going to shoot at her again. But if you have to go too forward, then you're probably going to risk bumping into her and not being able to shoot. Um, a lot of guys like Kath. I've never been a fan of her. I mean, doling out stress, I guess it's pretty good in the meta. Doing it against ships like Whisper and Soonter. But I feel like when you got eight dice, only one of them is a crit. And the fact that she doesn't really do any damage boosters. She's kind of like a flechette torpedo, so to speak, for an ability. I guess I probably just haven't played enough of her to really appreciate her ability, because she is pretty popular. I mean, interesting what Velden does. He can turn hard with that interceptor, but he might kind of leave him out to hang if the headhunters decide to turn into him with that ordinance. He's going to do a three right bank. Ooh, I'd still say if these guys do a one bank, he's still probably out of range. But now he's in a spot where he might have to barrel roll right. Or next turn he'll run the risk of running over that asteroid. He could do a one right turn next turn, but then again he'd be staring down that one. So this is an interesting decision. I'm kind of surprised he did that three right bank. Now he's going to barrel roll left. Hmm. So he's probably thinking next turn then he's going to do another bank, and then he's really going to be completely on their tail. He really wants to protect that alpha. Oh, we had a viewer. Not anymore. Just me. My audience of zero. Hmm. I don't know, though. Still in a bank, even a three right bank next turn, I think might put the template over that. It'd be really close. I think he's just going to end up doing like a three straight and then boost right. The headhunters are going straight. So now I think Velden regrets a little bit not doing the three turn because then he would have had a shot. There's no way to know, and that's a really risky move to do, but in hindsight, had he been able to see his dials, I think that's probably what he would have done. So Krakow's on the outside corner. Hmm. So looking at it now, this is setting up rather nicely for Veldrin. Well, 
Because this bounty hunter is going to have to do a one left bank to clear the stress. So I think you're probably going to see Kath either do a one straight or one right bank and just hope that these guys don't have a shot because you don't want to go one on five. But at the same time, like I was saying, his goal probably should have been to shoot at range three for the joust or from the outset. But... But at the same time, I don't think he really minds getting to range two that badly. But how with those, they're going against Blounce and automatic damage. At range two, you're going to be getting cluster missiles. So you're going to be facing four attacks of three against two, and then two attacks of four against two. And those two homing missiles, I think, are the ones that. Kraken is probably going to boost to give them a focus target locked four attack. And even with that double recon, it's going to be hard to dodge if you're Kath. Blount's going to put you down to nine. You figure the two clusters are going to land probably one hit at, at least each. Probably. Th I'd say three combined. Two attacks of three against two. Well, and again, they're not going to be boosted. So he gets two hits from the clusters, makes cast spend to focus. Puts him down to seven. And the homies come in. Probably going to have Kath live if it's range two. But she's going to get messed up. And if there's any crits in there, that could spell trouble. So it's going to be interesting now if these headhunters go hard at Kath. Because there's really no point in going slow. I think you're going to see like... But at the same time, he can't rush Kraken. So I think you'll see a one right bank with Kraken, two right banks here, and then three right banks on the outside. But that's probably going to be... Gonna be range three, if anything. So who do I like more right now? Hmm. Probably Veldrin. Cause he's got that interceptor. He got what he wanted with the interceptor. He's got that flank coming on. And even though this bounty hunter is gonna be trailing I still think he's feeling pretty good about his position right here. Because a one forward will put the bounty hunter here. About, eh, front end right about here. One right bank, put his front end right about there. Yeah, that might be some range three shooting. Which would be trouble for Kath. That's probably what he's thinking right now. But I don't know what else you can do. I think you just gotta go one straight. Man, they're really thinking these over. Looks like Holland's about ready. All in set. Looks like Veldrin's set. What does Veldrin do? I think... Three right bank would be... The way he's kind of flown the interceptor, he's flown him kind of defensively. So I don't think you're going to see the three right bank. So you're probably going to see a two or three straight. He goes for the three right bank. Oh, good move. That's tough to judge, because they don't even have the templates out here. So, he's got some experience. I've played a lot of games on Vassal, and I was unsure about that. So he's definitely got some experience. Now the question is, do you boost right? Or do you focus? I think I'd probably boost. I don't think these guys are all going to hard turn. Well, they might. But I don't think they will, because he doesn't want Kraken way out in the front like that.
He's going to focus. Bounty Hunter doing the bank. Double focus. Beldorn is going to turn, at least with the Talas. I don't think they're going to have shots. Ooh, but they might have shots on the Alpha. So that was a good move by Veldrin to not boost then. Because the Alpha is much closer than these guys. And I think... Yeah, he's just going to focus because he knows he can give them locks with Kraken later on. But what's crack? Is he really going to three right turn Kraken? He's just going to bank. Hmm. Interesting. What's Blount got in store? Blount's just going to one right bank. That's going to bump. Hmm. Not crazy about that move. I think you got to send Blount at the Alpha. And throw the eye on at him, because that alpha is hard to hit, but if you can eye on him, you basically got him locked down. He's still going to get his action and some dodges, but that would make the most sense to me. I mean, the eye on against the bounty hunters, what the hell is that going to do? Make him go forward one? They don't give a shit. They can shoot out their back anyway. And they're not, they're not going to stress themselves out. I think you got to send Blount to that alpha. I think maybe that's what he was saying. Just keep him back, and next turn you can go at him with him. Easy. So Kath does bank. Hmm. Not a fan of that. Because now the bounty hunter is going to bump him next turn unless you're able to clear him with a 4 forward but I don't know if that would, it'd be close I think I would've just gone straight yeah now Cass gonna eat it hard these three guys right here he's gonna come back at Kraken can he kill Kraken this turn? He needs some dice. He's going to have a 3-on-3 three three focus. And then a 3-on-2, maybe? With a focus. Going against Kraken's unmodified dice. He could do it. If he gets two hits here and one hit here, it's a good chance he could do it. Kraken's going to cluster. He didn't even check range. I guess he pretty confident that's range, too. There goes the cluster missiles. Wow! Three crits. Three natural crits. Not that it matters because it shields, but still. One evade. Alright. Now you gotta hope for some shit rolls here. Well, it doesn't actually pass the lock. To the Tala. It's actually done before. Oh, I guess. Never mind. He's right. After you perform an attack. Yeah. But he's not passing the lock. He's just giving him. It's not like Dutch. No. Well, I guess I said it was Dutch too. Whatever. Give it to the Tala. 
Oh my good glory, he gets three, two crits and a hit again. We get one evade, so two more shields. Yeah, he has to be able to lock now. He can, alright. This is bad news for Veldrin. Lost his shields already. He's got two homing missiles. Gonna come back at him. So now the question becomes... Kind of in a bad spot now. You've lost four shields, and you got two more homies coming at you. Do you try to kill Atala? Now, you, I was going to say, if the two of them went at Atala, but I forgot the Atala's going to shoot before the Alpha. So you might as well just go at Kraken. Kraken actually forgot his swarm tactics. So that was a big error. Because if he'd gone at Tala, gone at Kath with Tala, could have gotten a crit, like a blinded pilot, or a weapon malfunction. That would have been big. Or a injured pilot. He's going to go for Kraken. He's going to try to kill him this turn. And he gets... Nope, never mind. I'm sorry. And he's going to have that reroll too, so he's got a great chance of getting three hits. He gets two crits and a focus. Now, do you save the focus for defense, or do you spend it? Spends it. Three hits. One evade. So you gotta get two hits against him with the alpha. Don't want to let him shoot again, even though he's not gonna have any ordnance anymore. Comes the homing. This is gonna hurt. Cass, man, he might die this turn. He's gonna have two target locked focused attacks going four on two. Still got a focus left. And he gets four natural hits again. He has yet to roll even a focus or a blank. As Veldrin says. He's rolled 10 attack dice. He's got 4 crits and 6 hits. But Kath gets 2 defense. Oh, never mind. He gets a focus and a defense. So he takes 2. So he's got a good chance of living here. Tala's going to have another focused, target locked attack. Oh, unless it's the cluster missile, Tala. I know it's the homing missile. Tala 3 must have the cluster. Tala 3, yep. Ooh, he'll take that. The target locked the blanks. Hoping for another blank. Oh, that's tough. That's what happens, though, with those focus target locks. He got such a great chance to get four hits. That crit hurts bad. Oh. And there goes Kath. And that... Probably the game, folks. I mean, anything can happen, but... He says unbelievable, but that's... That's how it is when you got... Kraken... With those... All that ordnance, those homing missiles, is... Target-locked focus attacks... Like, more times than not, you're gonna get... The cluster missiles were lucky as crap. I'll agree to that. But those homings, that's what happens. They get, like, usually get four hits. So now, he's basically got to kill Kraken here. Even though Kraken's only got two attack coming back. Well, there's three hits, that's what you need. Well, he got him. So that's huge. 
You needed that. And on the flip side, all he's got left now in terms of ordnance is that he's got one cluster in the rear here. Probably not going to be able to shoot that this turn. But I think you're going to see Blount go at the Alpha and hit him with the Ion. But then what do you do with your Talas? You got this big bounty hunter bearing down on you. You got to start going to work on him. If you go through here, go at the Alpha and try to finish him off. Then you're going to have to K-turn with the Bounty Hunter shooting at you. But then you would make the Bounty Hunter sort of have to go into that asteroid field as well. Hmm. Because I was saying he should send Blount at the Alpha, but then if he does that, the Ion doesn't take effect till next turn. So... Like, if they all go at the Alpha, then the Ion was kind of wasted on him. But I guess it's a guaranteed hit against the guy with only three hole anyway, so... Tough decision, because you can kill him, and you're probably not going to lose one to the Bounty Hunter. So you're going to have four bandits, one of them probably wounded, going against a lone Bounty Hunter who's got Recon Specialist. Or do you go at the Bounty Hunter, try to finish him off in the next turn or two, which you probably would, but then you've got the Alpha on your tail, and you don't want to let... You don't want it to come down to the Alpha against the Tala one-on-one. -on -one. So even though Tala is going to shoot first, it's going to be three-on-three -three against two-on-two, -two, and I think most guys would take the Alpha in that situation. It's also got a much better dial, and the ability to boost and barrel roll. Tala can lock, but I think in that situation most people would take the Interceptor's out action bar over the Headhunters. That decision by Veldrin to spend that focus when he had... I don't blame him for doing that, because that's a tough decision to make. In fact, statistically speaking, that probably was the right decision. I don't know for sure, but that's what, that's what I would think would be my educated guess, my small educated guess. But he rolled two eyeballs on the last... That last hit by Tali, he would have dodged two of the hits with four life, taking one hit, one crit. So, uh, I think that's going to haunt him. Like I said, I don't think it was necessarily the wrong decision, but it just sucks and works out that way. A show of hands for those in this audience of one. Where have they gone? It's Monday. Those that watched my last cast. I was trying to find out who the national champion was at the end of it. And the guy's name is Rick something. And this Dark Templar is also Rick. So I'm wondering if it's actually that guy. Which he's running like two squads that he totally did not run at nationals. I know he's in the field. Someone told me his username at some point, but I forgot what it was. So I'm wondering, that actually might be him. 
So the interceptor does the three right bank. Little surprised at that. Decided to do the two to try to hang back in case that Tala comes in with clusters. I think he's thinking he's just gonna. Because I mean, you want to rush in and negate the advantage that these ordnance is gonna have. But at the same time, now, if these guys turn at you, they're going to be shooting with their primaries with three instead of one, which is a huge advantage. And you're going to have to take all those hits before the alpha gets to shoot. He's going to barrel left, too. So that's why he did that. He's basically hoping that they do turn into him. And... Uh, not a single one will have a shot, and that could be a game changer if that is indeed what happens. Although, I think if these tall as one bank right, they'd probably still have a shot. And I think Blount was probably, I don't know, these guys might still have shots even if he does do that. gonna put himself right in front of that asteroid. Ooh, it's gonna be close. Halt, Matt's either shitting his pants or not even concerned right now because he's either going at the Alpha or he's not. And I think since we saw Ooh the Bounty Hunter was gonna blast forward. I kind of thought you'd see him kind of hang back, but he wants to get him in there to give that Alpha system some support in case they do go at him. I thought with that move, he's basically thinking, okay, the Alpha is safe. Well, sure enough, they go at the Alpha, and that is not going to have a shot. Wow, what a great move by Veldrin. That could turn the game for him. And Holland's just going to throw his locks on... He said cast, but he means bounty hunter. Just gonna throw his locks on the bounty hunter just to keep him for next turn. That's a good move. The other tall is gonna bank. He he will have a shot though, range one. So that's gonna hurt. That will hurt. Three on three, but this is gonna be unmodified. And I think if this tall banks right, he's gonna have a shot too. Big question was gonna be what Blunt's gonna do. Because if he turns right. He's going to bump, and he's not going to be able to fire his ion. Ooh, that's a bump. Ooh. So, I'm surprised at that. Thought he would bank. Play it safe. Because now that's going to be a range 2 unmodified attack. And a 2 red dice against a 3 green dice. I think Veldrin's fine with them odds. What does Blunt do? Blount do now? I always call him Blunt. <laughs> you got unless it looks like anything, but a one straight at this point is gonna bump, unless he does like a three right bank. Gotta think he's gonna bump in this situation. Yep, and he does the two right turn, that's going to bump. And he might not even have a shot at the Alpha now. I don't think he will, once he brings it back. Going to have to shoot at the Bounty Hunter, way out of range 3, 2 on 3. And the Bounty Hunter is going to have a focus left too. He'll live with that. Yep, he does not have a shot on the Alpha. That is exceptional piloting by Veldra. Not only to gauge the distance of the three right bank, but then 
to have the wherewithal to say I'm going to right barrel roll and hope he banks. And granted, he's got shots with these two guys, but this is going to be a three on three with a focus. And then this is going to be a two on three. So the odds dictate the alpha should survive this. And especially the way the dice have gone, Veldrin's due for some luck. So it would. It's going to be brutal if the alpha dies here, but he should live. I would say he's probably got something like roughly a 55 to 65% chance of living, I'd say. Because a 3-on-3 three three with a focus, you're probably going to get one hit there, maybe two, but then the 2-on-3, you probably won't score anything there. I'd say he's got to have, I'd say it's at least a 65% chance of survival, actually. And then if they both get to fire back, if they both go at this tall and kill him, now you're going to have yourself a game. Because this guy's got a K-turn, even though he's got a lock, he's still got a K-turn. What's he going to do? I think he's probably got a K-turn, too. He could turn at the Bounty Hunter, but then the Bounty Hunter might just ram him. And he would deny himself actions, but he'd deny him a shot. So, and then whatever Blount would do. So you'd have your two pilots shooting at just one K-turn. Like I said, if he dies, and then Blount. I think he would take. And that bounty hunter, he's not going to die as easily as Kath did. Because his ordinance, all but this guy's, is gone. And actually, that's a good point, is that the Tala 3, if that's range 2 for the Bounty Hunter, I think you'll see both of them go at him. Depends if he spend, this Tala spends his focus, because this is range 1. If Tala spends his focus on attack, I think they'll probably go at him, but they want to kill this guy before he gets them clusters off. This isn't going to hurt the Bounty Hunter for shit. This is just going to be nothing. Come on. Oh, well, he gets a hit and a crit anyway. Good lord. He's still yet to roll... Well, never mind. He did roll a couple of blanks, though, but the Bounty Hunter evades anyway. I'm sorry. He did roll some blanks on one of those homings, but the two re-rolls were both focuses anyway, so... He's still rolling some bullets. That tall has got no shot. This one's going to be range one. Three on three. You hope for just one blank here if you're the alpha. Preferably two, but... Oh, they call range two. Hmm. From, on the, oh, never mind. From, from the no focus, okay. So he dodges that. So he's probably going to dodge this. That is huge. One hit, two blanks. It's exactly what you want if you're Veldra and exactly what you don't want if you're Matt. And the Alpha dodges. So, Veldrin takes no damage this turn. And now he's coming back. My turn, motherfucker. That's what he's saying right now. I think you gotta go with that Tala 3. Because you're going to have a 3-on-2 with a focus. And then another 3-on-2 unmodified. You might as well. He's got the clusters. BH on tall 3. Yep. 3-on-2. Three if he gets some luck, he can kill him here. He probably won't kill him. But if he gets lucky, he can. Oh my good lord. Only gets <coughs> one focus and an evade. That's brutal. Well, now what do you do? Do you go up Blount? I think Blount's in range one. 
Oh, man. That's right on the edge. So I think he's outside, actually. I would say that's range two. So now the decision is... Do you go to Tala 1? Or Veldrin thinks it's range 1. I don't think it is, though. If Veldrin thinks it's range 1, what's Holland going to say? He's just outside. Yeah, it's not crossing the line. Not sure how that's usually called in Vassal. I would say it's actually... There's sometimes, if it was one pixel closer, it'd kind of be like right there where you roll for it. I would say it's just outside. They might roll for it anyway, it sounds... It's, that's what it's looking like it's coming to. He thinks it is, I disagree. I think it's outside. Oh, Holland's gonna give it to him. Alright, well, that's good sportsmanship. Just gonna see a three on two here. Or, I'm sorry, 4 on 2, he's calling range 1. Well, if he gets incredibly lucky, he can kill Blount. It's due for some luck. And... I'll probably... Come on! Ugh. Well... Well, he got one shield. So, I mean... <laughs> the dice, they slow, they're slowly turning back into Velorin's favor. Holland definitely got the better dice the first turn. I still say, even with those huge whiffs, I still think Velorin had a slight, slight, slight advantage in terms of luck that turn. Very close though. But... So now... What do we see? I think Bounty Hunters are just gonna one left bank or one straight. If it was me, with the Alpha, I'd just turn them right. Because... Like, they could bump... I mean, like, if these guys are... I gotta imagine these two are just gonna K-turn. He's definitely K-turning. He's probably gonna go left. I think, if it was me with this guy, I'd just go left. Lock Bounty Hunter and try to kill him. But the Bounty Hunters... Because, I mean, even if the Bounty Hunter bumps, you can still K-turn next turn and probably have a shot on him with your clusters. If you're Blount, I don't know what you do. Probably just go at Bounty Hunter. You wanted to get those ions off of Alpha, but... Made some mistakes and wasn't able to get a lock on him, so... I think he's just gonna have to end up spending that pulse on the Bounty Hunter. I forgot to take the shield off of Blount, actually. And he did it in his hand. And they're thinking about it. 
I think he's thinking with the alpha. I know I can clear with a K turn and have most of these guys on my on on their ass, but I'm gonna be stressed. If I do a right turn, I can action deny some of them and muck up what Holland's planning potentially, but then I'm kinda gonna be in the middle of it. But you know this tall is probably going to shoot at that bounty hunter because he wants to spend that lock. And you know if you turn right, there's no way this guy could possibly get those clusters off on you. And even if they K-turn, they're going to be unmodified attacks because they're going to be stressed. And you can spend yours on a focus or evade. But at the same time, if you one right turn, you might not get a shot on anyone. So, and it's pretty easy to clear a stress with a interceptor dial so I think you might see a K turn here still think bounty hunter just I think it's pretty easy what he's gonna do one straight or one left bank probably a one straight to ensure he doesn't I think a one left bank might bump Mulholland's set. Eldrin's still thinking. And he's doing the right turn. Only thing about that is who do you shoot at? Like he's basically unless he decides to barrel roll, basically banking on the fact that one of these guys are gonna go this way. But the thing is his bounty hunter's moving first. So his bounty hunter might actually block. Eh, maybe not. He's gonna barrel roll right. You know, I think that's going to work out being a pretty damn good move, I think. Because I would bet money this guy's going to K-turn. And you know he's K-turning. So this Alpha is going to have a range 1 shot on him. Unless Holland guessed that's what he was going to do. It's pretty hard to guess... Your opponent's going to do that. We'll see. He's really using that interceptor to full effect. He made some mistakes early, putting Kath out there on her own without the bounty hunter able to shoot to support. But since then... Piloted pretty damn well. And Tala two K turns. Oh, that's Tala two. This is Tala three. Okay, so yeah. We knew he'd do that. And now he's going to have decisions, whether he goes with the Alpha or the Bounty Hunter. Yep. The Tala 1, that's going to bump. No doubt. What a great move by Veldrin again. Totally guessed correctly what his opponent was going to do.
Well, we'll see how the dice go this turn, but if you're Veldrin, you really could not have piloted much better these last two turns. And finally, he gets some luck. And he kills Tala 3, one-shots him. He was so due for that. But that's still brutal for Holland, but oh man, was Veldrin due for that one. So he finally gets another kill, and he takes out him, the Tall, before he gets his ordinance off. He still gets one more shot, and it's going to be a range one. Well, you got exactly what you wanted there if you're Veldrin. The dice are starting to come back to him. And he's in a much better position than Holland is. This guy is going to have to just go forward and be useless next turn. And then he's going to have to K-turn again and be stressed. Blount's going to have to K-turn. But what do you do with little old Alpha here? You can do a one right turn and bump. And hope that this guy clears with his two straight or two bank and you can get a shot on him. I think that's what you might see, actually. I don't know what else he could really do in here other than he could go left and shoot a Blount. And what's the bounty hunter going to do? A one left bank would bump, I think. He might just go straight again, double focus, and shoot out his ass at Blount. But you're in a bad way if you're Holland. You've got to try to concentrate fire on that alpha, but with your situation and the way it is, it's just going to be hard to do. And Bounty Hunter has still got full health, and he's still got that double recon, so... With so many targets on the board, he hasn't even had to K-turn all game. He's just been going straight the whole damn time. And I think you're going to continue to see that. Because why would you K-turn here? He's just... I think he's just going to do a two straight or a two... Two left bank, maybe. Probably two straight, I'd say. Double focus and go at Blount. Try to kill Blount before he gets his ions off. And really, I think you might even see that with Alpha, too. Do a two left turn. Focus. And then go up Blount, because he's going straight. He would bump. Can't shoot at the Alpha. Can't shoot at the Bounty Hunter, but I think Veldrin will live with that. And this guy's going to be out of the picture. So I think that's probably what you'll see. Meow. Yeah, and Holland's saying he figured he might. I believe him. It's just hard. It's not as difficult to guess where your opponent's ships are going to move. But then, yeah, it's just hard to figure they're going to do something like that. I mean, you can think you know, they might do it, but it's just hard to put him on and say, yeah, yeah that's what he's going to do. Like, you gotta know, you got to know who you're playing against. I don't think these guys are really too familiar with one another. Um, 
But that's the advantage of having those ships that can perform those actions that get them to move. Is that when you're going against bounty hunters and headhunters, you're going to know where they're going to land. But we can never, even though know, this guy's just a little one, it's so hard to lock him down. So the Alpha does a two right bank. So what's he thinking here? Hmm. He's going to evade. I guess he felt like the two left wasn't going to make it. But. I still think I would have. I think it would have. Because he was sitting right here. Yeah, it would have been close, but I think I would have gone for it. Because even if he landed on the asteroid, that taller would have bumped him. And he would have been safe from him. Blount probably could shoot him, but. Still an unmodified attack, two against three. And he is gonna be able to load up these locks on these bounty hunter on the bounty hunter now, but hmm. Yeah. I'm not crazy about that move, because now what do you do next turn? Well you got a K turn. And then you're gonna have to work to get your way back into the battle now. Bounty Hunter is going to be forced to go three on one here. He's not shooting, obviously, but next turn he probably will because he's going right. Bounty Hunter is going to go into him. So, and I don't know if Bounty Hunter is going to have a shot right there. That is going to be really, really close. And that's going to be huge, too, because obviously that's who the Bounty Hunter would prefer to shoot at. He's only at two health at range one. He's going to eat it here. Three on two, focused lock attack. <laughs> Won't eat it from Blount, but from old Tala. Hit blank. One of eight. Ooh. You spend the lock. He does not. He uses the focus.
Ooh, that hurts. Hoping for at least a focus there. He cannot shoot the Tala. He's gonna have to go up Blount. At range three. Still should pop him for at least one here. Gets two. Oh, that's brutal. Still think Velgren piloted brilliantly the two turns before, but I think that was a mistake. Because now this bounty hunter is going to eat it hard. It's probably going to left turn. It's going to get shot at by all three of these assholes. These two already have locks. Blount's going to lock. Fire is ion. Then he's going to be ioned. And all the while, like, what do you do here? I think you just have to... 4k turn? Isn't that what the Interceptor has? Is he either a 3 or a 5? So the 3 would be good. And then you gotta try to come back with a 4 straight next turn. So he might not even have a shot this turn. But even if he does, it's gonna be unmodified, way out at range 3. Unless he just decides to just run over the asteroid, but I think... I don't think he wants to do that with his little alpha. Wow, they decided really fast. He's doing a one left. Hmm. So, I think he got a boost here, yeah. Hmm. Does Blount get outside of that arc? I think he's gonna. I think he's probably gonna go too forward and. Wow. Oh, actually, who that'll be close. Bounty Hunter three turns. Double focuses. You know these Talos are probably gonna get shots. Two left turn. Yep, that's gonna hurt. Range 1, outside of the Bounty Hunter's arc. The other one's going to come right in front of him, yep. Of course, now, next turn, this Tala will have to K-turn, unless he goes right to go with the Interceptor. Blount goes forward 2. He's not clear of the Interceptor. So that's going to be a 3-on-2. Both unmodified, unless Blount decides to focus, but I think that'd be dumb. I think if you're Blount, this is a perfect opportunity to finally get off your ions. Because they're going to make Bounty Hunter go forward one here, and they're going to action deny him. And he's not going to get those double focuses, which has just been reckoning... It's been... Well, he hasn't really used them that much, but... It's still tough to take down those fatties when there's two focuses. Wait a minute. Oh my god. He focuses with Blount. You can't do that. You need the target lock. Oh, he's got dead eye. Okay. I'm an idiot. Yep, he's got dead eye. Okay. And that's, that's big too because now he gets to save that focus for defense. So that's why that dead eye is so, so awesome on Blount. Because you just shoot it, it's automatic, and then you just keep the focus. And I just moved it just taller on accident. And I think, isn't a bounty hunter at five? Is it? 
Oh my good god. Three crits. You've got to get... He gets another blank. That's brutal. I was going to say he needs no blanks there. These are going to hurt. Minor hole breach. That's no big deal. Stunned pilot would suck. Weapon malfunction. That would suck. Structural damage. That'd suck. Direct hit. You want munitions failure. Munitions failure. Injured pilot. Definitely don't want a blinded pilot. Minor explosion. Well, we'll see what happens here. He gets a dodge. He's down to two. Right? Yeah, he's down to two. Well. Hmm. Gotta get a fat one here. Four on two. Oh my god. He just cannot get any rolls going. And he gets a focus evade. Well... Hmm. Probably going to be all she wrote. We'll see what happens with the Interceptor before we talk about his next turn coming up. It's going to be a 3 on 2 here. And you absolutely have to get at least one hit, if not two here. And he gets one freaking hit. And he, of course, Blount gets an evade. Man. Well, you're in it. This is probably it. Even though the Interceptor is in a good position, it's going to be interesting to see what Holland does. Bounty Hunter's going here. This guy cannot K turn. He's only got the 3K turn. And it really makes no sense to bump into him. So I think what you'll see is this guy's going to K turn. Because that'll probably... He might be inside the Bounty Hunter's arc. But I don't even think he cares because he's got a lock. And he's going to be at range 1. So he's probably going to be able to kill the Bounty Hunter. 3 on 2 with a lock. So I think what you'll see is this guy is just going to 3 turn left, I would think. And try to put a lock on the Interceptor to save it for a later. But the interesting is what Blount's going to do. Was Blount going to go forward... To ensure the bounty hunter dies? Or is he going to K-turn to start going back at that interceptor? And if you're a Veldrin, you have to hope... I mean, if Blount comes at you... You just have to hope that the interceptor is going to kill Blount. If Blount doesn't come at you... You just pray that you live through this guy's shot and you're able to shoot back and do at least some damage. It's not over. He needs he needs some dice. Two left turn. In the ion. I was rethinking it. Hmm. Thinking, should I boost? I don't think you boost. I think you focus. Because if Blount K turns, I don't think Blount will. I think Blount will go at Bounty Hunter, but I'd still, I'd still focus. Because if he does K turn, then you're just bringing 
you're closer to each other, which really doesn't benefit anyone. You know what? No, I think that, yeah, that 3k turn will clear. He might just one left bank, actually. Now that I see that. Yep, there's a k turn. It clears, barely. So that's gonna hurt for the bounty hunter. It's three on two. You figure with a lock, getting at least two hits. So that's what you gotta hope for. You gotta hope for... Oh, that's brutal. What a great move by Holland. I thought that would bump when I looked at it initially, but that's basically gonna be it for Veldrin. And he sends Blount just to make sure. So... It's going to be all she wrote for the bounty hunter. And if you're the interceptor here, it's going to be interesting if Blount rolls something like, even if he rolls like two focuses, I think you'll probably see him just keep it. Even if it's two focuses. Or it's, I guess he's rolling three at range one. <sighs> wow. Man, Belarus has not had the dice, but that's why they do the five round Swiss because you're going to get screwed. You're going to get screwed in at least one game. One or two more might slightly go against you, but over the course of the tournament it should work out for most people. Some guys will get screwed throughout the most of it. Hopefully they don't, but it might, but... Gotta get some here. Been saying this all game, but there you go. Now you need some blanks. So you got two hits. That's what you needed. And you're in a pretty good position here. This guy's either gotta go left or K-turn. He's already hurt. This guy has to do a two left bank if he's going to clear his stress. And I don't even know if he will. He might just turn left. And then Blount. What's Blount going to do? Because you might see him just kind of run away to try to stay alive. And come back at a later time, but... It's still not over. I would say the odds point right now to Holland at least a... 85% favorite, but the Interceptor is a vastly superior ship to the Headhunter. And these two guys are severe. The Interceptor could one-shot either of these guys. You might even see him do it. I think he might do a two-left bank and try to get a shot on him. Because if he does a two-left bank, he should have a good shot on either Blount or this guy. And if he shoots at him two on three, a lot showing. Okay, so guess we know what he's gonna do. Sure enough, he's not gonna clear the stress. He's just gonna try to get a shot. But I don't think I don't think you really worry about that. You gotta play the odds. And a two on three unmodified attack usually will not hit. So I think even though the odds have not been with you, I think you've just gotta 
continue to stay with him and hope that the luck turns and goes with you. He's thinking. He's thinking, do I blast forward? Keep this guy from getting a shot. And try to finish off Blount. I wonder if Holland's going to change that now that he showed it. I don't think he will. I think he's just kind of holding it into his hand to make Veldrin think that he's changing it.
Okay, folks, this is very...